All oh, right, we are live, guys. Welcome to episode 102 uh, of Wine for the People, the only show left on the internet where uh, we don't take ourselves as seriously as the wines, and it's also questionable whether we take wine that seriously at all at times. Um, and tonight we have an absolutely amazing guest, as we always do. Um, uh, but this one in particular is actually quite amazing because uh, there's there's very few winemakers that have, have risen and risen and risen so incredibly well uh, in our industry, crafting and having, I guess, a, a really sort of um, single-minded fascination with at least one great variety. And it's now started to actually expand out uh, a little bit, but um, really interesting take uh, on uh, a great variety that we know that you guys all love. Uh, so tonight we are actually uh, here in the studio with Rob Mack. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. Thank you. No, thank you. Um, now, first, first up, first up, the most important question um, that I had out of out of all the research um, was was you're inspired by a bottle of Barolo on a cruise. Now you're a young bloke. You were born in 1982. Uh, how? How did you end up on a cruise, mate? Yeah, I thought this would be the first question. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, easy answer is my mother is um, a cruise agent, so she used oh, to get wow. a lot of uh, a lot of discounts on on these sort of trips. So used to go on a few, um, and just so happened that uh, it was on one of these that in '05 it was. So a while back now, 15 years. Um, but yeah, that but that happened. So um, yeah, what, my mum was on there too. So. Oh really? Oh <laughs> wicked! Yeah. So yeah. did um, what was it? Was it specifically the Barolo? Was it was it just wine and the atmosphere that really kind of got you absolutely fascinated? I think it was it was that particular wine. Um, had some age on it too. It just it absolutely sung the the balance of, of the florals and the and the intensity on the on the tannin on the body. So um, it was the first wine I'd really tried that that. that put all these things together and, and just blew me away. I'll learn a bit more about this. So, Well, can you tell us, did um, did this cheeky thing blow you away? Yeah, I don't mind the Wenderies now and again. <laughs> so yeah, I've been buying from them for the last 10 years and normally just get a little a few bits and pieces. Um, but like the Wenderies, yeah, that, there's a massive synergy between Wenderies and, and, and the, the good Rollos as well. So a couple of nights back, we had we had a few of the newer the 18 Wenderies plus some of the, the, the current... Well, you're on the list. Barolos. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, but seeing them side by side, the Barolos and the, the Wenderies, um, it's quite... Well, seriously? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I want to I invite out to your house, mate. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's not uh, that's a good. It's a really good link to bring up early on. Well, I did, um, I did notice, though, that you had a bit of a, a debacle once upon a time, and I wanted to actually offer you... Um, uh, i got a couple of spare. Now, this is a gift. Yeah. Um, here you go, mate. Oh, yes. <laughs> these, these are good. I do like these. Um, I've, sna I've actually snapped the. Um, I've snapped these as well. So I get a bit aggressive with them when I'm, <laughs> I can't, can't work them. But um, when you're ten windaries mm, deep, yeah. and you're just trying to, like, oh, how can I? <laughs> that, that was an eighty-two. That's the eighty-two, isn't it? That, right? was, so that, that was that uh, was your. Uh, uh, I believe your thirtieth. So mate. yeah, our birth year, the birth year wine. Um, yeah, and they were. Lita and, and Tony Brady, I wrote them a letter and said, look, that's how communication is with, with them, which is great. He said, I hand write a letter. Um, and said, like, I've got a, got my 30th coming up, love your stuff. Um, been buying only for a couple of years. Yep. And they said, okay, we've got an 82. Um, it was a beautiful blend and they, they sold it to me at, at current pricing. Oh so, my God. So 50 bucks for it. No. What is off the absolute yeah. legends. It's off the chart. That's the legendary price. shit. Yeah. One day, we're going to start laying down back vintages for the day that Unico Zello is in the heights <laughs> of Wendery. Uh, yeah. <laughs> we can uh, we can we can recreate this for for a. Uh, I'll I'll be like eighty years old at the time. There'll be a young hotshot winemaker, you know, thirty years old. <laughs> it's like I just you know, truffle hound got me into. I really wine. just <laughs> need that two thousand fourteen Fiano. <laughs> <laughs> So uh, you made, you obviously made uh, and have made a remarkable reputation in the world of Grenache. Mm. Um, Nebbiolo has never been on the radar for uh, you? Not to produce, no. Not to produce, no, why, why not? Um, the history of the regions that do it well, so obviously looking at Barolo Barbaresco, um, I just, I don't see any hope of coming anywhere close to getting to that quality level. Whereas with Grenache, I think we can. Um, so totally. it's, it's, it's about chasing, always chasing a, a goal of 
of having something that is sort of world class that can be compared mm. with some of these amazing wines out of Spain. So looking at you know, some of the high altitude there is, is yeah, really yeah, yeah, yeah. stuff. Um, uh, you know, looking at the classics like Reyes and things like that, that are, you know, paper and bucket bottle, but they, they drink pretty well. So um, yeah, Nebbiolo, talking about links as well, I see a Nebbiolo and Grenache link too. So yeah. um, you know, obviously with the tannins, there's a different structure and everything like that, but but the florals and the the just the intricacy and the fine knit sort of detail between those two varieties when they're done in the, the best sites available, um, there's a synergy there too. So, well, for those playing at home, I'd like to know uh, what is your favourite Grenache? And I know there's a whole heap of Grenache lovers out there. Uh, and I also particularly want to know uh, for those playing at home exactly if you have ever had a uh, a life-changing wine or a life-changing brilliant i'm not necessarily talking about like a genesis wine uh but i'm more talking about a wine you may have already been into wine beforehand but i'm more talking about like if you've had a wine that's just made you kind of go you know what i just quit my job uh or you know you know what i'm just gonna you know change the color of my hair i don't know i want to know if you had a life-changing wine before and and what what was it and what uh what change did you uh did you go through? Um, let's get some wine into glasses. Um, where do we want to start? Let's let's. What do we got here, man? Okay, so I've got two two Grenaches. Cool, makes sense. Um, we got a twenty twenty just here. So twenty twenty three weeks ago, fresh. So just just being released now, basically. So I thought, well, yeah, start right. there. That's our smashable kind of um, really um, intense aromatic style. Yeah. I brought another one, which is our eighteen, which is uh, actually sold out. Runs for nineteen now. But I thought I'd bring this because this has. Uh, a real layer of intensity from the 18 vintage. So you get to see a bit of that. Um, and then we've got our, our flagship here, which is the Rapture. And this is a best of vintage uh, blend. So we change every every year, depending on what looks good when I'm blending all the other stuff. Um, and that's always in the back of my mind thinking what will work. So it's sort of like the best of the best. The best of the best, but it has to yeah. work. So I might set aside, say, six barrels and only yeah. two make it, that sort of thing. Oh, so wow. it's always about um, the synergy, Top gun. but yeah, that's the thing. And the others will find their home, you know, next year or, or in whatever whatever else is top notch. But this is this is what works best from the best of what we do. That's how I like to sort of. How, I've got to ask. I'm jumping forward because we're going to get into uh, a feeling on uh, in a little bit. But how do you come up with the names? Mm. Because you've got some incredible, like there there are, you know, look at some of the names that we come out with. They're pretty pretty crazy, pretty out there. Yeah. Um, uh, I'm always a massive fan of wineries that have uh, like a lot of sort of um, they really consider each and every single one of the one of their sort of wines and why they call them what they call them. Um, you know, you've got an amazing, amazing array. How do you actually come up with them? Um, the, the name generally always has something to do quite strongly with. Um, uh, with so, for example, the, the Confluence, which is this one here, um, which is 100% Grenache. It's it's the confluence of our best. Uh, parcels, so they usually make sense when they're when they're laid out. Um, the Matara that we do is called the Emergent. I see Matara as a as a variety that's on the threshold of you know becoming a, a really well accepted and, um, totally. and great single variety wine, but it's still not quite there. So that's why the Emergent is being used for that. Um, our Shiraz is is called the, the Tendance, which is um, French for trend, and yep. that's part of the reason. It's just a little tongue in cheek thing that you know. McLaren Valley needs to have a Shiraz or we'll probably get shot. So it's kind of <laughs> yeah. a play on that. So it's, it's always a little bit sort of tongue in cheek, but it, there's always a good reference to you know, the affinity GMS, the affinity of the variety. So of course, there's yeah, always yeah, something okay. there like that. Um, so you're not going to get like the best of the best and you know split it into two wines, calling it Maverick and Goose. Probably not. Like, no. Probably not. <laughs> okay, <laughs> but the Raps is no, going to be a bit of family and friends. Also. All right. So should we start here? Do yeah, you definitely start there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah cool. Yeah, sure. um, I read there's a study um, that uh, just got published uh, recently, and it's one of those you know gets picked up by some sort of NAF news outlet, where um, um, I'm not sure how great this study was, where it was like a peer-reviewed journal sort of levels of study, but they were talking about how age in red wine actually decreases its uh, supposed or, or uh, purported um, health benefits. So therefore, smashable reds, man. Yeah. Um, you know, better for you. It's very apparently, it's yeah, yeah. I, I, I read that too, and it's it's really interesting. But yeah, how much stuff you put in? I don't know how many studies was behind that. But oh man, so, Noah, should I just like <laughs> just, <laughs> let's give let's give the man some respect? <laughs> yeah. Let's pass it down. I'm this excited. is uh, this is next level. Like this is the sort of style of wine that I'm 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 into. 
This is like ultimate. Did you make a lot of this? Uh, we this was on the bigger end of what we do because Good. out of twenty, a lot of the batches looked to, to suit this kind of more vibrant, really crunchy style. So out of twenty, there'll be more of that and less less of, of this. So um, yeah, going for early release crunch smashability. That's that's what this is about. But at the same time, having something to talk about too. So yeah, it's that's yeah, it's really good. That's a six packer. That's yeah. possibly a dozen. <laughs> That's one of those ones like you always want to have around. You always have one. That's the thing. One of three chimp cool. and it's it, it goes. It's pretty versatile. So you know, by itself, I, I love drinking this one by itself. And if we have people around, we've got a little tasting room at our place. Um, I saw uh, you can book. You can book tasting. Yeah, tasting five point. So, How wicked is that? Yeah, it's just the front part of our of our place in Wollonga. It's it's the old the old heritage part of our house. Yeah. Mm. So we sort of made it as a separate separate little tasting venue. Um, and yet, if this gets opened, um, then I usually finish off the bottle at, at night because it's it's my it's just smashability is off the off the charts on this. So you know, I reckon you know, Encyclopedia Britannica, crack it open, mm. and you navigate to W Wednesday, and you go down night. <laughs> um, you know, <laughs> photo with this bottle is yeah. totally what's happening. This is you know, okay, we, we've seen a lot of sort of reds of this ilk. Uh, on the show, I was 102 episodes. We're going to be encountering these ones, but this is in the upper echelon, I think. Of, of like, just it's it's Grenache's Grenache isn't famed for its ability to retain a lot of acidity. I got to pick it a lot earlier to be able to actually get it to retain or get that retained acidity. Um, I actually don't mind the fact that you know because typically what we would see in wine styles like this, it'll be you know like a Nero or you know be be sort of early harvested Pinot or Gamay. something. Like Gamay, yeah. yeah, absolutely. Which you're always trying to fight tannin with, right? Um, whereas Grenache doesn't have a lot of tannin, doesn't have a lot of acid, and it just kind of like it's just. I think the the it's a terrible word for it. I think it's called sloshy, mm. um, where it's just so easy to it's just so easy to drink. Yep. It's just it's there's nothing there's nothing. It's just what is it? Uh, uh, nothing but neck. Mm. Uh, <laughs> is, is, <laughs> Seriously, nothing yep. but neck on this one. Uh, jumping straight to the comments, Kerry Carter. Thanks for chiming in. Uh, first one, Affiliate on Wine. Hello, Daddyo. Um, Aiden, hi Brennan and Rob, uh, Katie Spain, Rob Mack, uh, bring on the glorious ganache. Uh, love those labels. Ask me to design them. And that, that question is coming. We're gonna we're gonna cover that. Don't stress. Uh, Rob and Lou do one of the loveliest by appointment tastings in Wollonga. Highly recommended. Um, and it was really cool. You can actually jump on their website. It is linked up in in the description. Um, uh, seriously, you can just it's it's really easy. Uh, I'm just actually booked it myself. Um, <laughs> Mel Sinclair. Oliver's Taranga Grenache, absolutely. Uh, mm. One of the, the sort of OG guys doing, uh, gals, I should say, forgive me, uh, doing amazing Grenache uh, in the Vale. Uh, Kerner Grenache, Clare Valley. Kerner, man, so some of our favourite wines that we've, we've actually had. Especially Grenache's Clare Valley. You, you, you started, your first vintage was in Clare Valley. It was Killer Canoe. Yeah, that's, that's, that was oh, my nice. first proper production experience, yeah. So why, um, I mean, I mean, surely you could have found great Grenache and Claire, Kerners yeah. did. Well, actually back then Grenache wasn't, it wasn't as high on my radar as it is when now. we started in 2014. So yeah, 14 right. onwards was our first vintage, that was what, that was the only wine we made in 14 was Grenache. Um, so it was between 10 and 14 when the Grenache sort of revelation happened. Mm. Um, but I think, yeah, look, being in, being in Claire, I was just, it was more to do with the Rieslings, to be honest, to, to get involved with that. Um, after I took up the job at Killicoon, I found out they didn't actually make Rieslings on site at that point. <laughs> <laughs> but that's all right. Um, so worked with all the Reds and, and got to drink plenty of Riesling. But um, yeah, the Grenache, the Grenache thing came later and, and there's definitely a few. So yeah, the, the Kerners for sure, with that, they call it Canada now, I think. Yeah. The Italian name for which you never hear about, which is really good to see being thrown Sardinian. Out. Sardinian, yeah. So, yeah Sardinian. And they do a lot of kind of plays on Sardinian yeah. wine. Uh, yeah. Plus, yeah, Glenn's tonic stuff. Um, of course, yep, yep, yep. Oh, yeah. Um, and, and they're all, they're playing on that sort of early thick, crunchy kind so, of style. So. Are, are we going to see, like, typically there's always like an us and them thing with the Vale. It's like, you know, it's Barossa Shiraz or Vale Shiraz. Are we going to start seeing Vale Grenache or Claire Grenache? Is, is it going to be like I a, think is, there, is there a cool event in that somewhere? It, it could be, yeah. Um, outside of those two, I mean, there's probably one or two others, but there's not a whole swag that I could probably... Here's, a, head, here's a good one. Here's yeah. a good one. Swan Valley. Yeah, okay. Swan Valley. He's a 110 few. year old vine. Oh, out of Swan Valley. Out there who do some really interesting stuff on, yeah. on Grenache. There yeah. are, I, I, I heard that there were bulldozing Grenache mm. out there because they're like, nah, I want to plant cabbages. Makes more money. Yeah. Like, right. 
Seriously, seriously. Yeah. What, a, what a swing and a miss. Um, so when when did your time in the UK happen? Because you did you spend some time in the UK? No. No, was it working for Louise? Did um, my wife? So she wife. Went, when we went over to to Italy a few years back. Yeah. Um, she went over for um, for a visit with our with our little one at the time. And, yeah, we could. Um, yeah, that was more just a trade trip. But yeah, no, I haven't haven't done too much over in the UK. But we do have um, our ones over there. So, so it'd be nice to get over at some point soon. So uh, oh, no, yeah. <laughs> tell me, right? Yeah. Uh, I mean, look, I love Gamaraka. It's mm. fantastic. Yeah. Uh, you know, um, what's going on here? Uh, what is that? There's a bit of a, a crazy tasting with. Um, look, I've I've called it old farts oh, tasting okay. Grenache. Right, yeah, um, yeah. yeah. Wearing aprons. <laughs> um, I've no idea what's going yeah, on. Yeah, no. So, so um, a good mate now, uh, Milton Milton Wordley, the photographer. Yep. So he he got on to us to do one of his um, ten questions in wine events, um, which is a great journalistic piece that he does. Takes great photos and and writes up. Um, a story. So he's a member of that group. That, yeah, um, wicked. Old Farts group. Yeah, so he. It's, all, he took, he took it's it. probably got yeah. a much better name than that, guys. I'm so sorry. It's not far off. It's no. okay. It's like <laughs> old Bastards group or something. Oh, like really? That. <laughs> no, 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 sorry. Oh, the, no, the Duffers tasting group, I think. <laughs> <laughs> That's too good. I've been a radar now. But, no, it's, um, and so, yeah, he, he showed some of ours, which is great. So it's nice to see some of these lighter styles being put in front of maybe some more traditional style drinkers as well yeah because there's a lot of there's still a lot of people certainly um i've noticed in the adelaide market that um are very traditional sort of drinkers and it's it's great to see that change um with those sort of demographics too i gotta say though mel mel sinclair like there's got to be an award for mel somewhere in like you know the next next couple of episodes she's throwing out some of the best names the best puns the blokes and bibs tasting. Right. Uh, <laughs> it's uh, it's fair. I will, I'll award that. I'll pay that. Yeah. Um, so I, I obviously, and I think, and it is obvious because it goes ten pages deep into Google. Mm. Uh, is uh, is your your amazing win in two thousand and eighteen of the Young Gunner Wine Awards? Um, but I think for me personally, what I found more amazing was that in twenty seventeen, you were actually awarded in that show mm. as best new act. Mm. A lot yeah. of work in 12 months, man. So we we're best take the whole <laughs> fucking show out. Yeah. <laughs> That's amazing. That's what I'm spreading out, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I know this year, this year there was the same producer that got the best new act and best uh, and, and took out the whole thing as well for the first time. Wow, um, so you should start a new winery but, well, yeah. to go up against him. <laughs> well, yeah, why not? Um, but uh, yeah, so it was, that was fantastic. So there are the two years that we were involved in it. In the first year we got best first time finalists and, and then the second wow. year we, we took it out. Um, wow. Which, yeah, that was the first time that it, that it happened consecutively. Um, I know Joe Perry took out Best New Act and then I think it was a year between and then she took it out. But, uh, that was exciting. Yeah, really exciting. And It's so cool. Yeah. It's so cool. It, mu it must, just, does it give you, because I remember when we first released our ones and by then you'd only been maybe a couple of years out. Maybe it two was, years yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, when we first released our wines and we started sort of getting a few sort of, uh, you know, gongs at shows and mm -hmm. stuff like that. Um, it gave us remarkable confidence because there's some of the stuff that we were doing was just weird. Yeah. It was just wacky and it's like, oh, I don't think this is going to be for anyone and suddenly it was for someone. Yeah. You know, for you, was it like a massive sort of build, confidence builder? That first one was especially. Yeah. Yep. That was probably the first, well, was the first, we didn't really have many shows back then because we'd only been going for it. Like, so that was our 16s that got us that first trophy. Yeah, warmer we, vintage. Yeah. Uh, it, it was, yeah. yeah. Um, I was a 16 actually and a 15 as well. So that's the good thing about that show is you can put in exactly what you want. There's no restrictions. Yeah, um, no, as long as you have the wine available. Yeah, as long as you have it available, yeah, which is fair enough. Um, so we'd only be going for, yeah, two years. Um, and then we picked, we picked that up. Um, and that, that was definitely a shot in the arm. The second one was more a confirmation um, than anything like, else. That you're a badass. Yeah, that we can, <laughs> <laughs> well, we can back it up. We went in one sort of, you know, a one shot pony on that. And, and For sure, of yeah. course. And then yeah, since then, it's, it's been sort of, you know, we don't aim for a lot of shows, but the ones we do generally, you do all right, so. But you do, you do some judging. I do, yeah. You've done some judging. Do quite a lot of judging, um, yeah. It's one of my favorite pastimes. And so talk to us about this because um, uh, this of course is one of your your shots. Um, I've yeah. just pilfered this from anywhere. Mm -hmm. Because I think there's a lot of people uh, playing at home that don't really understand how wine, like when we talk about wine shows and judging wines, how do you judge wines? Well, you're looking at it. That's actually what they do. Um, and that's, I'm gonna hazard a guess, that is a royal show. 
Uh, Adelaide, I'm pretty sure. Royal Adelaide. Yeah. Oh yeah, Judge Royal Adelaide. Royal Adelaide. Um, yeah, 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 right. So it's, um, yeah. Most conservative show in in Australia. Just about is. If yeah, it's not it's Shiraz, changing, then it doesn't win. <laughs> <laughs> it is changing nicely now, though. So yeah. I think they're on the they're on the curve. They're some really good sort of fresh blood in there and, and doing well. So. Is it relevant? Um, I think it is. Uh, whether you look at the trophy ones, some of those are always going to be in that classic style. Certainly, yeah. at, at the capital city shows. Yeah. I think um, they're very different. So the regional shows and the capital city shows are two extremely different. And then there's this, this third level of show, this new wave show, like this drink easy, drink easy sort of hot 100 where yeah. um, there are no rules. Yeah. Um, and Ruth's actually chimed in here asking, uh, what are the critique points mm. of, of wine show judging? Mm. That's a good question. I, think, I reckon the, the trickiest part um, is, is keeping fresh. In suppose on that photo, there's brackets of up to 40 wines in one hit. And if yeah. they're big tannic cabernets, then there's then the, you know, by the time you get to the end, it, it's, it can be a bit of a everything looks the same kind of thing. So, mm -hmm. so I developed a lot of tricks to <clears throat> keep fresh and go back and forth, bounce around. Um, I think the main points that I focus on is if something doesn't look amazing, mm -hmm. um, don't spend five minutes trying to pick it apart and think why it's not great. Yeah, um, just move on. So it's focusing on on the best, and the best in a bracket of forty might be ten. Yeah. So I'll take. 15, 20 minutes to go through everything, bring those 10 forward, mm -hmm. and I'll sit down then the next half an hour on those 10. So it, it, it's about breaking down a big piece of information, which is 40 line lines, into a, a smaller, more manageable piece when you can look at and really focus on them. It's hard. I, like there's there's always, um, especially when you, you build a lot of camaraderie, I think, in those those uh, shows as well. For sure. um, yeah. I remember rocking out one day and it's just everyone feels for either, I think it's the, the rosé bracket, mm. uh, everyone always feels, for, it's become a bit more of an exciting bracket. That's People are actually much, much better. better Cause it used yeah. to just be like sugar on sugar on sugar. It was, it was, it was a diabetic level mm. of, of, of tasting. Mm. Um, but then you've got the other end, which is, um, you know, you're a 70 Rieslings, have fun for the next hour and a half. And like, you know, you're, you're, you're just, you know, holding on to that little, little thing of tooth mousse in your, yeah, yeah. In your pocket, yeah. trying to, yeah, exactly <laughs> trying to right. like protect your enamel. Yeah. yeah. Um, it is, it's, it's hard. And, but I mean, look, it's, it's also the, I guess the relevance thing, if someone wins a top gong, is it actually that good? Uh, um, well, we've done well at a couple of shows and, and I'd say I'll pick up a little bit. Um, but again, that's, that's not necessarily the main reason we do it. It's a, is to calibrate where we are in yeah. the scale of things. Yeah. So if we come out at the top, that's great. If we're mm -hmm. in the middle, then fine. I'll see what's done better, what's done worse. And that's that's the main reason we enter. Yeah. Um, but the main reasons I judge is so I can see you know, what's happening over in WA without yeah. having to fly over there and go to wineries for a week. Uh, yeah, that's, that's cool. It comes to me. And, True. Um, and being able to see what's what's on trend, what's on fashion and, and mm. things like that. So it's, it's all about I think getting stuck in the same region and only tasting similar region wines, it's a massive issue as far as sort of regional palates go. Yep. So I try and keep mine as fresh as possible. And you know, recently been buying in a whole ton of international stuff to try and get a bit more you know, excited about that. I, I love some of that stuff, but it's not cheap. That's the issue. So. Um, See, I, I gave up on show judging after a little while. I just decided to start a wine show yeah. and just invite winemakers to bring their wines to me. Yeah, uh, and, right. <laughs> and you don't even have to just... <laughs> yeah, instead of judging, it's just chatting. It's yeah, just, yeah. just like, <laughs> chat, I'll drink your wine. Looks good. Um, but uh, you've, you've um, I guess, obviously wine shows, we've both done them. You mm. spit a lot. Oh, do you, yeah, ever, do you ever just play on. games? Do you ever just like spit and shower? Do you ever just <laughs> yeah, like, well, do you ever just like, you know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, because I did notice uh, this uh, was an yeah. amazingly cheeky shot yep. of a bunch of obviously winemakers in the veil um, just spitting, spitting out. Well, do, do you reckon, yeah. do you reckon, you know, with the whole like COVID thing? I don't know how to be all that well received anymore. No, 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 no go on the, the, uh, the spit -o, Probably not. You know? That was, that was about six, seven years ago, that one. But, um, really? Yeah. Have an age of day, mate. No, of course not. No, no, no. not at all. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, so that was at uh, McLaren Vale Winemakers, which is where I spent um, a few years um, with the team there. They do a lot of small batch stuff and that, mm. I, I learned a lot of really, really good techniques there, which was, which was exciting. Well, let's jump into the next mm. wine, I reckon, because yep. uh, mm -hmm. nothing but neck, nothing but neck. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, Aphelion, hmm. where'd the name come from? Uh, so it's a, it's an ancient Greek term, means from the sun. Cool. So what we try and tie in with our branding um, is 
is so the sun, the earth, bring it all together and, um, and, and tie it all in. So with the, it's got a concept of terroir basic aspect. Yes, yeah. exactly. Um, and we'll probably talk about the labels a bit later. Um, Louise was responsible in my life for most of these. Um, and the design aspect. They're beautiful. Tweak every year. They are some of the most beautiful wine labels in in the, the wine industry, like hands down. Yeah, They're incredible. You. It's been a it's definitely been a work in progress. I mean we're up to a point now where we wouldn't change anything anymore. Yep. So it took it's taken six, seven years. Just with all the tweaks. But yeah, the initial the initial design um, yeah was, was all all loose. How the so, how the, the sort of colour is it is it like a how's it actually painted? Let's let's first let's crack into it. Yeah yeah let's crack into it. Yeah, I'm just gonna so this is the 18, 18 Confluence, which is our sort of flagship kind of Grenache. Um, 18 had a bit more intensity to it than, than what we're sort of used to. Normally we chase a bit of a, like a quite a fine, delicate, aromatic style. Uh, this one has a little bit more grunt, and um, that was just a, how the vintage rolled. Um, Damn, yeah cool, all right. about 25% whole bunch in this. This wine bounces between about 20 and 30% uh, as far as whole bunch goes. The twenty twenty will have a bit more. Have you um, have you heard of um, you know Bill you know, Bill Downey? Yeah. Bill Downey has an amazing sort of view on sun yeah. on the sunlight. Yeah. Um, you know we talk about in you know this concept of terroir, this concept, and it's I think to be honest, if you talk to any winemaker, we just know it's a legitimate thing. Mm -hmm. It's just yes, you you want to be showcasing wines of sight and cheeses of sight and chocolate of sight. You know it, it does make a difference. Mm -hmm. um, but talking to Bill Downey, he has an amazing. Uh, so he's a winemaker behind. Uh, where he was he was one of the inception winemakers behind a thousand candles, and he's got his own uh, you know wine label now. Amazing Pinots out in uh, Yarra, Gippsland, etc. And um, uh, talking about how there's different concepts of terroir that just make a big difference. You know, in, in, and they talk about the soil a lot in Europe, where you know it is so fertile. Um, and it's so um, it, it changes so much in very small sort of periods, where uh, geographical areas. Uh, in in Australia, things are a lot more old, a lot more fractured, a lot more uniform. But what is actually really unique is actually our sunlight, our UV index, yeah, okay. uh, where it's actually quite uh, quite uh, similar across mm. most of Europe. Mm. We actually have fair amounts of differences in our sunlight. Mm. And his argument is that sunlight is actually uh, in terms of you could grade. Uh, terroir by you know all the individual inputs that would determine flavor Australia arguably sunlight would be yeah. one of the most important things yeah. and it's a really interesting sort of concept to be able to firstly I think terroir is a, it's a tough concept to swallow in general if we don't know it from our end if we don't know it from the production end yeah. um, but Definitely pertinent mm. uh, because it really sets our terroir, I guess, apart from others. Yeah. Um, That's a really interesting aspect. I've, obviously, it's one of the most important parts, like you say, but to grade it by, by sunlight. That's, yeah, it's interesting. This is amazing. This, this is, is this is like I, I mean, it's it's funny to smell something and go, it's more serious. Mm. Like you can smell that, and it's not as playful. It's it's grown up. Yeah, it's dialed back here, yeah. and and what I want this is I want this to take a while to open up. So this will show so differently in, in a couple of hours to, to on first crack. Um, but yeah, intensity leveled up a bit. Um, touch riper as well. So it's about fourteen point three percent. Yeah. Let me just try this thirteen six. So right, okay. A little bit, a little bit higher in alcohol. Doesn't top, feel it. Lot. Doesn't feel. In fact, the acidity on this is really yeah. Fresh. So this is amazing. The, the weird thing is with Blue at Springs. This is one hundred percent Blue at Springs fruit. Yep. From a couple of great uh, growers, Brinnies and the and the Waits. And we only have a couple of grows in Blue Springs and, and we've been working with them for a long time. And it's about an extra two weeks hang time compared to down in the flats. So it's only an extra maybe 50 meters of elevation, it's not a lot. Um, but to let this hang longer and longer while the acid doesn't drop out and the flavors develop, it's a, it's a huge boom to that, to that region. And that's why this wine is always 100% Blue Springs, because I think it is basically, as a sub-region for Grenache in Australia, as as good as you can. I'm going to talk yeah. about that in a second. In terms of uh, dropping out, uh, I did notice that uh, Noah just let you all know that um, uh, it is hissing down mm. outside <laughs> right now. And uh, Gummeracker is notorious for just dropping out of power. If we do drop out, um, uh, all that you need to know is that um, we will continue to drink wine without you uh, and have a really <laughs> in the dark. great time. Uh, <laughs> but we will definitely miss having you guys uh, on board with us. Mel Sinclair. Uh, spit the difference. Sunlight, it's what plants crave. 
I'm loving all the input, guys. Thank you so much. Um, you, you, you did something actually that was really interesting when you first started up, which I thought was really fascinating, uh, which was uh, one wine, multiple different ways of, of being able to make it. You've really focused on vinification and it's, it's actually a bit of a, a funny thing. You know, it's almost a bit of a dirty word now because it, we're all about minimal intervention, not we, I mean, we as a, a whole industry now. Um, obviously, we ourselves have gone through a period of you know playing around and mucking around with things. Um, is is the vinification side of things still fascinating you? Or are you starting to really and it clearly the, the wines are very well tailored. Um, are they? Are you starting to narrow down on our method? Yeah. Look, the first the first vintage and the, one of the reasons we did do that big spread was to nail down what we wanted to do. Um, but having said that. When you talk about minimal intervention, the only difference between those three processes, which was um, a whole bunch of ferment, a whole berry ferment, so no bunches at all, and then the third, it was only three barrels, the third barrel uh, was a combined pressing. So that, that's all it was. So it can't get much simpler than that. Um, and then, so, so we, I combine now what I've learned from that along with site. So it's, it's bringing the two things together. There's no reason, I, I, why would you focus just on one or just on the other when if you work with both, yeah, vinification techniques, um, it's all it's all hands off pretty much. It's it's whole bunch of whole berry. It's extended ferment time, so you up to four months on yeah. on some things, um, and that's it. We don't play around with with you know can you handle additions, additions and, and stuff like yeah, stuff. yeah yeah yeah. You know, yeah. As far as oak goes across the board, it's very neutral. It's very it actually is very um, neutral. Like there's, you, there's I can't, no, you can't you pick up on it. it. No. Um, it's one of the best like re perfectly integrated oak to Grenache so I've seen in a while. It's, it's, it's awesome. All this is old, insane. Old French. So yeah, that's great to hear. How much does that set me back? That's yeah. 35 retail. It's pretty, <laughs> so, yeah. it's pretty good. Yeah. It's pretty good. Mm. <gasps> that's damn good. That is damn good. good. That is that is I, yeah. I bought enough wine this week and I think <laughs> I, mean, I think Laura's gonna really yeah. be upset with me but uh yeah. you know what sometimes you're just better off asking for forgiveness wait wait wait, uh, wait till payday wait till payday <laughs> uh, yeah. so obviously the vale, the vale is massive vale, vale is a massive place why why obviously you just said blue springs is the place yeah. um and and you said something earlier before talking about uh, you know obviously there's a bunch of new varieties that uh people are getting you know really psyched about in australia but um you know you you believe that australia uh can really you know hold its own when it comes to carve its own niche when it comes to the world of Grenache. And we had someone on before, Xavier Bizzo mm -hmm. from, uh, from uh, Tap Napa, um, you know, talking about, hey, like we've got all these great varieties that are coming in, that's good and great and all, but man, we've got like 100 year old vine this, you know, 80 year old vine this, and they can be dry grown, they're already there, they're staring at us, there's 80 years worth of investment. Is that the reason why Blue It Springs? Because there is a confluence of really old vines or is it, so what, what is it? Oh, it's part of it. Um, so this is so the Brunei vineyards uh, between eighty and eighty-five years for their for their vines. So Grenache is one of the varieties that site is super important, but vine age is, is massively important too. So mm -hmm. intensity comes, I think, in vine age with Grenache. Um, it's it's so transparent as far as that goes. The it's one incredible. we tried before, um, the base of that, so fifty percent of that was younger vines, so still about 15, 20 years old but um, a little bit of the older material in there as well to make it you know, uh, a bit more intense. But yeah, when we look at those older vines, um, they're just, and they, they just keep producing. They, they love it up there. They've got the right soils. It's, it's, it's free draining sand. They just um, absolutely have a great time. And even though they're so old, um, mostly bush vines, um, so they don't get hammered by, you know, you know, tractors coming through and all that sort of thing. Everything's done by hand. So, um, it works so well. It's a combination of site and vine age, and um, yeah, it's, it's such a unique little, little area. We have a segment on the show. We're going to jump to blind tasting in half a second, um, but we have a segment on the show. This perfect segue for this. It's called "Prove Me Wrong." I say something outlandish. I might not necessarily believe in it. Sometimes it's just for dramatic effect, um, and it's your job to prove me wrong. Prove me wrong, mate. <laughs> Vine age don't matter. Because <laughs> <laughs> rewind for. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Does vine age actually matter, or is it more like site selection? Okay. Is it is it because a vine has been there for so long that it's finally adapted to its site? Can you find can you find another variety that might adapt to the site quicker, or already be adapted because of better climatic selection? Um, the vine age and Grenache definitely matters. I would argue it less for, for other varieties. So things like. Sauvignon Blanc. Sure, sorry. Sauvignon Blanc. Sorry, there you go. Um, but I think 
I think Grenache is a variety that, that Vine Age massively comes into it. So, um, two vineyards that I work with in Bullock Springs, one of the other ones has 40 year old vines and also eight year old vines. Yeah. And we've been we've identified those separately. Um, both fantastic passes for different reasons, but the intensity that comes out of that, that old, the older vine stock, combined with the intensity from this older vine stock, is there's no it's just amazing. It's yeah. just yeah. And, and looking no at looking at other producers source material as well, looking at vine age, it's the pattern there is it can't be can't be just you know, coincident. Uh, well, Michael McNally, thanks for chiming in. 2015 Sagrantino is pretty serious. That's grown up. Um, uh, we are going to be getting onto Sagrantino and a few other newer varieties. Mm -hmm. Lucky George has chimed in twice saying Rob uh, with, uh, <laughs> you know, what's, what's the emoji called where it's just love hearts in the eyes? Yeah. Um, whatever that is, Lucky. Um, Hard eyes. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, and Amy, beautiful wines and people love Aphelion. Uh, we love you, Amy. Thank you so much for chiming in. Uh, it is that time. It is time for blind tasting. Thank you very much, Noah. Sorry, I've got there. The, we don't maybe think about the. Uh, no, I'm okay. Uh, He's cool. It's 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 really actually quite easy. It just it's more the viewers have to you know look at my face. We like you, Noah. <laughs> we like seeing you, Noah. Yeah, that sushi That's train nice. thing. Happens, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> 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 nah, just get, just get a weird pulley system. Yeah. Just whoosh. When we have that Netflix money. Uh, <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> um, all right, so let's do this. We know how to play. Um, you, you've played blind tasting, I'm sure, uh, before. Mm -hmm. uh, would you like to ask the questions or would you like Noah to ask the questions? Uh, I'll get them thrown at me if that's all right. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. All right, let's do questions. this. The comments are down as well, this, so I don't know what it is. This mm. is going to be fun. All right. It smells um, incredible, and there is a lovely little hint of eucalypt here. There is like a really distinct mintiness, which is beautiful. Like, super spicy. Massively spicy. All righty. Is this a uh, new world or old world? Oh, sorry, is this red or white? I think it's red. Yeah, it's red. Do, should we just get rid of the red or white call? Yes. Let's get rid of the red or white. <laughs> yeah. We don't even need black glasses anymore. Uh, <laughs> we, we, it's like a 99.99% .99 strike rate, except for one wine that came in from uh, from Delinquente wow. that we oh, yeah. both of us fucked up. It was, <laughs> it was very bad. It was Negro Amaro from the Riverland. No one's going to pick that. <laughs> it was incredible. <laughs> it tastes like a white wine. Anyway, uh, it's red. Yeah. And I think... Uh, this is a beautiful wine. It is a beautiful wine, and, and you know what? My um, my initial thought was um, New World because of the eucalypt, thinking mm. Aussie and stuff like that. But I'm actually going to go Old World. Something about balance is extraordinarily balanced. I'm going to go New. What do you know? Do you know what it is? No. no. Oh, you don't know what it is? Oh, awesome! But well, you actually <laughs> bought a wine. Did you please wrap it up <laughs> for you? <laughs> So you What's don't know what it is? Is, this, is that the one? This is your wine. Oh, okay. I thought we were doing a full blind one. No, no, no. We'll do yours first and then we'll do, we'll, <laughs> we'll get yours later. Oh, that's cool. Sorry. <laughs> that that would have been amazing. Looks, that is brilliant. Yeah, yeah that's that's the challenge for someone else to, to come with. Yeah, yeah, It's yeah. a blind one that they don't even know. That, that, yeah, um, they don't even know. Reason reason I was going for New World was because the spice that's coming through on that is just super over, like over the top. That yeah. Kind of yeah. yeah. So I thought I was going to go with a, like a, a local, like body red. I, I, I agree with you. Mm. Actually, that was the thing, but it's something about this acid balance. Mm. It feels like a natural acid line. It's just, it's quite sublime. That's why I sort of just thought, you know what? Oh, wow. it's, I think it's going to be, if it's not, it's a weird, awesome Yarra. Yeah. Um, but uh, I'm going to Old World. Um, yeah, this is Old World. Cool. This is, a, this is Old World. Um, are we going to that go. That was a toughie as well, the, the Old World New World one on this one. This is, this is not an easy wine. Yeah. This is not an easy wine. Um, is this from France, Italy, or Germany? I think this is from France. Uh, this is from Italy. Cool. Okay. Okay. Um, now I'm just going to. I'm optimizing now. Is, yeah. I'm optimizing. <laughs> I know, no, no, because I was thinking, okay, we're, we're sort of like maybe in, in Languedoc, Roussillon. Where sort of there's a little bit of garrigue, that spicy thing. They do some mid weight reds, sublime acid. Yeah, sort of like okay, maybe Veneto, maybe like you know up up, up north or possibly Primitivo, <laughs> down south. Like uh, yeah, maybe like a Puglian Primitivo, like a really good one. Yeah, all right, all right. Uh, are we gonna go uh, to uh, Sicily? Yeah. Are we gonna go to uh, Veneto? Or are we going to go to Piemonte? 
So, say those again, sorry. Uh, this is Sicily, Sicily, Sicily Veneto, Piemonte. Veneto or Piemonte. Yeah, rough. Uh, mm. I would love for this to come from Piemonte. I really would because it's so atypical of what I've ever seen. The only great variety I've ever seen out of Piemonte that is remotely like this is uh, Pella Verga. Uh, I'm going Sicily on this wine because it feels ricotta ish Sweet. I, that's exactly what I wanted to happen. <laughs> I was so wrong. Yeah, this is from Piemonte. <laughs> <laughs> that's cool. Um, it's cool wine. It's beautiful. Now, I was thinking like a spicy, yeah. That's something spicy. Something like yeah, 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 yeah. Absolutely. Mm. This is cool. I don't know what this is. <laughs> don't know what this is. I am so thrown by. I mean, Piemonte red wine, and 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 I, I would like to. Is it possible to do sub region? Uh, yeah, we can do that. We can absolutely do that. Okay. Um, so, is this from, uh, uh, forgive me, um, Viduno? Dano? Viduno? Not Vidun down the road. Yep, um, yeah, yeah. Is this from uh, Dalba? Alba, okay. Alba. Again, terrible. Or is this from Asti? Uh, you're very tricky, man. You're very tricky because I think you just Googled like, Pella and found Viduno from there because that's like such a... I'm going to go with Alba. Uh, this is uh, from v Viduno. <laughs> <laughs> now... Um, this is Pella Verga. <laughs> Got it. <laughs> um, is this... Is this... Um, Brachetto? Is this? Oh, <laughs> is this um, <laughs> Pedaverga, or is this uh, Grignolino? Grignolino, Grignolino. Yeah. Wow, I haven't had. A, I've, I think I've had one Grignolino in my entire life, and it tasted nothing like this because it had bread and it was <laughs> mousy and it was bubbly. Uh, so I'm been... going to stick to my guns now because I should have from the beginning and I'm going to go it's Pella Verga. You're on the money there, dude. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Finally, this, how many times have we done this? Stick to your gut. Just it do it. You know, always, commit. It always works. What, it always I mean, works. What it always kind, works. Don't screw that up. What kind of gut predicts that? Like, mm. you, there's so many like, no, 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 that's so obscure. What's the possibilities of yeah. someone bringing that on the it's, show? It's, it's really pretty weird. much... Like next to there, there are there are some varieties for me that are like my like if I could have that variety in Australia I would. Well, outside of of what you do with Grenache, and I know you're, we're going to talk a little bit about Sagrantino and Mataro, but what are the things that are you like? Because you said that you were doing a Nero mm. in 2020. Mm. Did you do one? Yep. Yes. How'd it go? There we go. Uh, good. It's probably probably November December somewhere around there. So not a lot of it. Only about or oh, maybe 120 dozen something like that. So tiny. Pretty tight. Fine. Yeah, the yeah. yields on that were half a two ton batch. Four. Yeah, Not yeah, a bit more. There were shit like the stems and about three berries. So <laughs> <laughs> it was a tricky one at the moment, but um, it looks good. Really playful and bright and vibrant. Um, doesn't have the spice drive of this, but Kellerberg is something that I'd never heard of before we went, I went over there in 17. So uh, can I take a stab going, at that producer so. as well? Because I think. There's, there's only like, there's really only a handful. This right? is the only one I, this, I didn't bring this back with me. So this yeah. is the only one that I could find. Okay, locally, there's locally. only two that I know of. Like I have really geeked out about this variety. It is gorgeous. It is beautiful. It's the Grenache mm. of Piemonte. Well, the thing. I was talking to CSIRO about cuttings and stuff like this. It's, it's, Do you want to go halves? So, so no, 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 seriously. Yeah. I'll go halves and bring the variety into the country yeah. with you. Yeah. Man, let's do it. Mm. Uh, that and Frappato. Mm. They're mm. the two things I desperately want here. Mm. Um, then I don't think it's Bulotto. I think it's um, Fratelli Alessandria. That's big points uh, there. Pink oh, the, label on the front. Yeah, Not yeah. really pink, but you yeah, pinkish. Pink sort of. I don't know. So Color we had that. Colorblind. Branding's, <laughs> branding's fucking awesome. We the branding's that. awesome. Yeah, yeah, fantastic. We this had that is over awesome. there too. That was, that was one of the ones we saw over there. So when I, was, when I saw that here, that's great. Yeah. I sort of stocked up on a, on a six pack of that. And that's the 2018. So Who brings it in? Who brings it in? Um, World One States. World One States. Yeah, so they've got, oh, got a pretty smart little thing. In. I'm racking up really a bill so, uh, yeah. tonight that Laura's not going to be happy with. I think retail, um, that would probably be around 
45, 50. 50. 50. 50. 50. Yeah. Which I think for that quality, that's one happy plane to follow that. That is absolutely remarkable. Pella Vertiga, like if you guys, if you guys don't have it, the, I know Bolotto is only actually brought into South Australia. Right. It's such a rare, wacko, wacko great variety. Did you guys, you would have gotten to, um, we actually didn't realize this until, until Rob rocked up um, and we, we, when we met before, but we yeah. haven't had a chance to chat. Yeah, yeah. proper chat. We actually worked at the same place mm. in, in Piemonte. Mm. Uh, so we were reminiscing mm. a little bit. Um, but uh, what's the other, what's that other crazy native grape variety they have in Piemonte? Uh, Fraser. Fraser. Yeah, so Fraser, Viro do a great Fraser. So, yeah. um, called the Kai. Kai, Kai, Kai yeah. Kai. I, 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 it's um, never really attracted me. No, it's pretty, it's pretty animal. But it's like, it's, it's quite quite animal, isn't it? You know, it's very, very rusty. I love it. I usually have a couple of bottles in the cellar waiting to go, but it is, it's not that approachable style. It's a no. much more um, inwardly sort of rustic kind of wine, a bit more Vitaro, I guess. Uh, so my, my lovely <coughs> wife, Laura, has just chimed in going, oh yeah, more love hearts. Um, Laura, of course, loves uh, Perra Vertiga, and I'm pretty sure she's actually driving back. If not, she might have actually returned from uh, our other side of the city. And I would suggest she's probably True. making a beeline here uh, to try some Pella Vertigo. <laughs> uh, I'd say she won't be too far away. Um, if not, she's going to be breaking a lot of road rules. Um, so, <laughs> Sagrantino. Mm. Talk to me about Sagrantino. Um, where did that come from? Because that is definitely not Old Vine Blewett Springs. No, that's like, not. Uh, that's, that's a new one. That's the other, the other end of the scale from Grenache, pretty much. So, second yeah. most tannic variety after Tanat. Mm. So, um, Louise... And I went through Italy in 2015, 2014. And one of the spots that I wanted to have a real close look at was a little town called Montefalco. Which beautiful town. It's actually a beautiful amazing. little town. Yeah. yeah. There's so many great spots in Italy, but this was this was one of the standouts. Um, central Italy, so Umbria, two hours from Rome. Spent a couple of nights out that way. And the, um, the variety itself is, the way they make it over there is they let it hang for a long time, big extraction bottle it and sell it maybe 10 years down the track because it is so tannic and so over the top. Um, if you look past all that, then there's some amazing floral characters to it as well. And again, coming back to the aromatics, that's why I build my wine down with the aromatics. The palate usually takes care of itself. Have you tried but some of the Charmers stuff? The yeah, so I have, yeah, Charmers. There's a bit of um, uh, Oliver's Tranga, do a great one. Yes. Yeah, they do. Yeah, they really, do. really they good. Really smash really, really, really good. Uh, Darius, Darius, have a bit. So in the bale, there's about three different small blocks. Um, we take from a uh, single grower who only has two rows. He's just grafted a couple more over, but sick. <laughs> two rows in a vineyard. So we get between one and two tonne at the most. Um, and it, we try and treat it very gently in the winery. So um, just one sort of plunge a day just to keep the cap wet um, yep. and gentle pressing. Neutral oak for about uh, almost two years just to really soften it out again. And, um, and then you bottle usually for a year before release too. So we're going kind of on their approach to soften it out. Not that it needs as much because there's not a lot more fruit in there. No, you, you could have done like Nebbiolo, mm -hmm. man. It would yeah, have been way quicker. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I could have tried that, yeah. But I don't, I in, in, in the Vale? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> not in the Vale. From Sicily, we drove from Sicily back up, like actually drove down and then back up and we had to get back within like a, a day or two. We're getting married. Mm -hmm. It's kind of something that you, a date you want to keep. Yeah. Um, yeah. And uh, we stopped overnight. Actually, like we, we drove all day from Sicily, um, all all the way to to Montefalco. Mm -hmm. We overnight in Montefalco. Oh, okay. Go down to the the local. Just we're like everything was closed. It was like midweek. It was like Tuesday. You know, uh, just walking around the, one of the main piazzas there. Jump into the little wine bar, cafe ish thing, um, and we were rooted, mate. It was like eight hours worth of driving to get there. Mm -hmm. And um, we're like, look, do you have any Sagrantino? Because of course I'm like, look, I'm going to be here, I'm going to drink Sagrantino. And they were like, what are you on about? What are you on about? They just kind of looked at me, so like question marks on their face. Yeah. Um, and they're like, we only serve one wine here. I was like, sure, okay, I'll just have a glass of that. And it's, it's like, no, no, they only serve one winery. It's all in Naldo Capri. Yeah. It's just like, <laughs> it was like, yeah, yeah. it's 100% Sagrantino. Yeah. 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 And they, do, great stuff. they do some pretty smart stuff, and it's not cheap either. Their top stuff is the top stuff. Couple hundred bucks at least. So, um, um, yeah. all right, we we have ten minutes left, mm -hmm. uh, so we're gonna do. Uh, we can't let you obviously come on the show. Mm. <clears throat> Bringing an amazing wine, especially one like this. That's this is, no. I mean, that is definitely one of my all time. That's in my top three, mm. like wines of all time. 
Fantastic. Yeah, that, it's, that's, that's a beautiful wine. That's, oh, that is like next level. Like we have had two of the most smashable wines that I've ever actually consumed in my life yeah. on this show tonight. So that is like, <laughs> that is like that is, that's the Could tagline. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 That, uh, that 2020 Grenache and that thing. Yeah. Um, but it is time for another round of blind tasting. This mm -hmm. time you get to, to, to play the game. Mm -hmm. We have three wines wrapped up here. I actually don't know what they are because mm -hmm. Noah wrapped them up um, and Laura purchased them. Uh, from various different retailers, importers, and so it could come from anywhere. Yeah. Um, so make your choice wisely, yeah. and um, grab yeah, chuck it to Noah. And uh, is this a BLE contender? Ooh. I I reckon absolutely. Yeah, I'm not sure. Like this is this is a wine nerds thing. Like this is there's there's you know the difference between a in fact this is a wine geek wine. Yeah. Um, that's why like I've I've developed a slight man crush on Rob right now because of this wine because <laughs> you know the difference between geeks and nerds. You know, uh, it's, they, it's, yeah, explain it to me, Brendan, and explain yeah, it to the audience. Yeah, yeah, because uh, geeks know and nerds think they know. Um, you know that is. Uh, thank you very much. Richard. Thank you, Richard. <laughs> um, and this is a wine geek thing. So. I think big label energy, BLE, you know, that, that wine that you you just kind of like, you know, like impress some mates, you just drop a front canella, some yeah, magma, yeah. and yeah. you just like walk away from the table like you're a badass. Yeah, yeah. Um, now I'm going to be dropping 2020 Grenache from Aphelion. Yes. Um, but uh, that's a geeks wine. I don't think, I don't think this is big label energy. I'm pretty confident. This is a, this is, a, this is next level freaking wine. Like this is, this is definitely the most favorite wine that I've had on the show. Uh, all apologies to everyone else that's come the last 102 episodes, but that is next, like, the fact that you've even, yeah. yeah that's that's actually hard to, to, yeah. to get. Big vinification energy, yes. <laughs> uh, how big is your top three list, VC? Um, well, it's three, Lockie, and if you try really hard, maybe you'll be in it. Uh, <laughs> Dilf. <laughs> Dilf. Dilf on the Dilf top three. three. <laughs> is number three. <laughs> that's, that's three. Um, and speaking of which, uh, Dilf wines, of which we've we've featured um, uh, both uh, of the winemakers behind on the show before multiple times, uh, they're just about to launch their website as well. Definitely worth supporting another small winemaker uh, having a crack as well. Need the geek list published somewhere, Mel? That's actually so cool. That's mm. a really cool bit. Yeah. I that that is that is a, a piece of content that I will do. I'll have Brendan's geek list done in the next week. Um, I reckon we'll that's so easy. Let's go beyond that. Let's ask everyone in the wineries what they're like geek wines. Not something you may just know from Top you know. ten geek wines from like yeah. This yeah. is a great idea. Yeah. That is a that is an awesome one. I reckon we're gonna grab and Rob, you'll be our first. We're going to contact you and ask yeah. for your top 10 list of the geekiest wines that you like to. Then we're going to assemble like a, we're going to do like the Matrix thing. We're going to assemble this sort of like, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We're going to, we're going to find that who, who actually wins behind closed doors, mm -hmm. behind closed doors. Who, who is actually the, the winner of the, the geekiest oh, wine? Geek off. Yeah. Wine oh, makers versus yeah, songs. Oh man, good. there's so many awesome. Oh man, that is we got, meta. We got that content. <laughs> um, all right. Ooh, little bit kissed by the cork here. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's, it's a little bit kissed by the cork here. How badly? No, 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 it's, it's not badly, but um, uh, I, yeah. I think we could definitely identify the wine. Sure. This is, I think this is old school. It's, it's workable. I'm shoving the comments down, so I don't know what it is. Mm -hmm. um, if this is an old school Aussie, I don't know what it is. Yeah. Uh, this this feels like a you know good old good old Kunawara Cabernet, you know <laughs> like like surely. All right, Dad. All right, yeah. yeah. <laughs> this is Monocle sitting yeah. in a Chesterfield in front of a buyer Cabernet. Oh yeah. Of angel. If it's well, I mean that the thing with the cork though, isn't it? Can, it can speed it up so fast. But... Yeah, if it's if it's looking this corky, it's the, you kissed, never know. It's definitely kissed it on the palate though. Mm -hmm. Like the nose isn't as as bad as the palate. Let's, let's muscle through. Alrighty. Let's muscle through. Is this uh, New World or Old World? I'm saying New World. Ooh. It's got that acid there, doesn't it? That's all. That's slightly like forced. Bronchi? Forced acid. Bronchi? I've got a new. I've got a new. Uh, this is Old World. Yeah. Really? Yep. Jesus. For this real? This is our world. It's, um, mm. it's got to be French. <laughs> no, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. Um, okay. All right. No, I'm. Uh, I'm. I'm mm. calibrating, optimizing. 
It's old world. What are our countries, Noah? Uh, let's go. Austria, France, and Hungary. Wow. Man, you should have seen my face when India was thrown into those options. I was I was there too. We had some Indian Sauvignon Blanc. It was Legit. not good. <laughs> it was fucked up. It was uh, not good. <laughs> um, I'm going France. Was that in the options? It was, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah, definitely. I'm going France. It's not hungry, but... Yeah, Austrian's tempting, but I... Uh... Mm. That's a bit of blow. That's a bit of blow. Nah, I'm, yeah. think, I'm thinking Loire Gamay. I'm thinking, sorry, Loire Cabernet Franc. Mm. Yeah, that's where I'm. I'm. All right, because I'm going yeah. with Loire. Yeah, <laughs> yeah you're going gonna, with Loire. I'm not going to back down. Mm. Very good, is. fine. Yeah, I'll go, I'll go French. I'm not going a different part of France, but yeah, I'll go, I'll go French. Uh, you're both right. It's France. Um, now, are we going to the Rhone Valley? Are we going to Jura or are we going to Loire? I'm, if Loire's in there, I'm going to keep guessing Loire till I finally get one right because every time I, I get led astray by you, Noah, because of your options picking skills, uh, I am going Loire. <laughs> <laughs> Doggedly. <laughs> Wouldn't it be great if this was the first time it wasn't Loire? <laughs> It would be Noah, but what is it? Oh no, wait, Rob. There's something in there. <clears throat> I'm gonna go, <clears throat> excuse me. I'm gonna actually go Rhone on that. Cause I reckon there's something in there that's a bit village yeah, kind of. Yeah, um, okay. Like an Herbe really Suo, sort of like a. Crashy. Okay, cool. So, I, okay. I yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go Rhone. This is from the Loire Valley. Oh, yes! <laughs> finally it's happened! After a hundred episodes, you finally picked a Loire wine. Congratulations, you have got a Wasset 3. <laughs> yeah, that's right. I'm a winemaker. <laughs> um, alrighty, is this... Uh, is this Malbec? Mm. Is this uh, Smur Champagny? Or is this uh, your mate Cabernet Franc? Uh, I don't think it's going to be Malbec. I haven't heard of a Loire Malbec before, but good, good, like Vouvray. Profile, some I think pretty, pretty good. Some Vouvray, red some Vouvray. Vouvray. Yeah, really? Yeah. Wow. Okay, that's crazy. Um, this could be a crazy one. I'm sticking to my guts, going Cabernet Franc on on this. I haven't tried a red out of Loire that's not Franc, so yeah. I've got no real basis. Of we've tried. A, we've tried a lot. Yeah. We've tried a lot. <laughs> okay. I've got them all wrong. <laughs> um, <laughs> Grolo. Grolo, <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. No, I'll go. I'll go from too, because it's yeah. Find the reference point. Yeah. So this is some uh, some your Champigny, I believe. It's S A U M M U R Champigny. 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 Yes. Um. So yeah, this is from the Andrew, actually. Justin um, Hess, though, is just chiming in going, my favourite part of the show, BC getting owned on blind taste. <laughs> yeah, well, I don't know that. Good to know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's my it's my favourite part of the show too, Justin. <laughs> um, this, this, is, this, is, this has got some age. Well, let's, let's, let's go for that then. Are we going to go uh, 14, 11 or 8? 14, 11 or 8. Yep. 2000s, by the I'm way. Go 8. I go 14. You went eight? Oh, no. You yeah. went eight. Yeah. What is it? Oh, this is 14. Oh, it's 14. You've, done, you've picked yeah, vintage go. and yeah, region go. here, region. Brendan. The, the, the variety game. is very obscure. Oh, this is the same producer that we had with the... Uh, the Sancerre. The Sancerre. Yeah. That's right. That's, um, so it definitely makes wine in the Loire Valley. That's fantastic. <laughs> 14. Yeah, wicked. Mm. It's cool one. Um, I mean, look, I'm shame about the cork. It's probably not something that I'd be, uh, but I'm really, really glad we have both uh, Pella Vergo and 2020 Grenache open. Mm. Um, <laughs> and, and 2018 <laughs> Grenache. Don't forget about the... And so, uh, look, there's, there's, we have literally 60 seconds left. Mm. Uh, and uh, we, there's a range of things that we haven't covered. We haven't covered this wine. We have spoken about it. Um, but there is one thing that I, I think um, uh, being... You know, uh, Unico Zello, mm -hmm. couple, we started, my, both my wife and I, uh, we spent a lot of time working 
pretty hard together. We know how hard it is to, to work together and we would absolutely not end an episode without uh, actually acknowledging uh, Superman. For sure. uh, so I would, what's going on here? Uh, yeah, so that was the trip over to Italy. So that, and that was in the UK. Um, when Louise went over with our little one who was four months old on that trip um, to show off our wines to a UK importer. And there is, there is on your Instagram, and I do encourage people to go and check out Billion's Instagram as well, uh, because honestly, um, there is amazing super mum shots there. Yeah. Is she like, I'm going to say 10 months pregnant? That's good. Is that, is that possible? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> and she was squeezing in the winery? That is insane, man. Yeah, no, she loves it. Yeah, no, loves it. Yeah. Loves it. Have you so, asked her that? Yeah, well, she turns up. So <laughs> <laughs> there's what but, an absolute There's a few thing. like um, ultimate wine wine making super mums. One of the best I've seen is pretty much similar. This was a uh, uh, Charlotte Hardy doing a restaurant floor shift yeah, nice. at Blackwood, pouring glasses of semi on for people yeah. and like rocking a baby that's crying at the same time. <laughs> Just seriously <laughs> awesome. And so of course, good. Talking about Charlotte Dalton, she's also involved in a cheeky little. Uh, uh, project with you at the moment as well. Well, 5255, five, putting Langhorn Creek on the map. Um, has that wine been released? No, is so that... we're bottling that probably around the same time as the Nero. So it'll be like November. So was so, this was this a concept about like Langhorn Creek getting getting grapes into great winemakers' hands that they absolutely love? Yeah, basically. See what they so, can do. so see the what you make. Great Council um, offered two time to three different winemakers. There's an application process. They, they pick the three. There's myself, Turon and Charlotte. It's good um, three. Turon got Grenache. I mean, lucky. I wanted to work for that. Um, I got Malbec because I see it as such a nice variety. Right, the Creek, absolutely. Um, the Creek, I like that. The Claire, the, the Creek, creek. Yeah. and uh, Charlotte picked um, Piano. So there's there's a nice little mix there, and I think the Piano is either about to go or has just been bottled, so that's going to be released pretty soon. Check. Um, and then ours, I'm not Sorry, sure when ours is is going to be out there, but um, it's a, it's a great project, and the grower we worked with has been amazing. Um, picking times was whatever I wanted. Uh, which is which is brilliant. So um, you know, we don't always get that. So it's it's exciting. It's a great Absolutely project. Absolutely brilliant. And, and guys, been supporting us strongly the whole way through. Right. And guys, Langhorn Creek. We've seen obviously mm -hmm. what uh, the work with Dill Fines. We've seen some amazing Tariga and Tempranillo coming out from the likes of Steve Panel. Um, but most importantly, as well, 2019 Jimmy Watson winner, the trophy winner, bleeds our wines as well down in Langhorn Creek. There is an amazing array of wines that are coming out of Langhorn. Don't Creek. forget Sven Joschke. Sven Joschke, Sven Joschke as well. Uh, some of the, honestly, there is something going on in the creek uh, yeah. that everyone should be paying attention to. So, um, especially for really great value wines uh, as well. Um, totally, absolutely incredible. But that has unfortunately brought us to our time. Uh, we we uh, we're actually biting into Henry's time right now. I'm sure he's waiting to hit Sorry, the, the stream button uh, out at Apple Distillery. So ch stay chimed in for for Henry. Um, but guys, thank you so much. Uh, for for trying and being an, actually an awesome audience, really engaging as well, and um, actually quite a sizable audience for a Wednesday as well. Thank you so much, guys. Mel Sinclair gets the um, the Wine Geek Award of the night. Yes, there is a Wine Geek Award. Um, uh, it's uh, and great to see Terry Rawson as well for a little while, mate. Thanks so much for chiming in. Uh, we're going to be enjoying a whole bunch of Pelo Verdiga and, and Grenache uh, <laughs> uh, after this show, um, Rob. Thank you no, so thank much you. For, for taking time and sharing your story with us. You've been Good absolutely fun. fantastic uh, to have on as well. And of course the wine. Um, yeah, you're like my idol now. <laughs> <laughs> Noah, thanks so much for producing tonight. Uh, being fantastic as always. Uh, and of course, Kerry Richard, thank you very much for being a live audience. Uh, guys, we'll be back next Monday. Uh, with another absolutely amazing guest uh, and hopefully they're bringing Pella Verga too. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that's on the guest requirements, must yes, bring Pella Verga. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Guys, thank you so much. Have a great rest of your week.